Hey, welcome back to the Amazing Freedom Podcast. My name is Nate Slammons, joined by Andy Slammons. We are excited today to talk about additional ways to find products to sell on Amazon, specifically products that we have sold over $100,000 a month over the past couple of years using the exact methods that we're going to talk about today. So I'm really excited to get into that, Andy. Uh, this is the show where we talk about all things finding and launching products on Amazon. We're really trying to stay focused on those topics because over the years, we've found that those are the two main areas that most people struggle with. Uh, and you can talk about all these hacks and all these other little minute details when it comes to selling on Amazon, because to be honest, right, there are hundreds of things, hundreds and hundreds of things that you need to know about selling on Amazon. But if you don't get finding the right product and launching the product, right, the rest of them really don't matter. And we talk about this all the time. A lot, a lot of uh, sellers will kind of get caught up in the paralysis by analysis and, and they're afraid of everything that could go wrong and they don't even have a product to sell, right? And so you can you really can let that fear mentality stop you from from becoming a millionaire by, you know, doing the right thing selling on Amazon because you just worry about all that could go wrong or all the little details when you haven't even found the right product or learned how to launch it, right? So we want to focus on that uh and and you can find other places and other um documentation that we have on how to do all those other little things because we've talked about it, but for now, we want to focus on those two areas. And hopefully, as you come back to this show each week, you get value from that. Andy, before we hop into one of the main ways that we have found products to sell on Amazon the last few years, I want to remind everybody to head to amazingfreedom.com and sign up to be an insider. I believe by the time this is out, our third edition of the Amazing Freedom Insider Magazine should be out. And I'm really excited. Uh, we're just about finalized to get um, the the cover um, story for this magazine. I think it's going to be really good. The first two have had tremendous feedback from uh, insiders so far that they've really found value in it. So I'm looking forward to seeing that continue with this third edition. When you sign up to be an insider, you also get updates from our newsletter and some of the tools. We just released a new tool last week um, as part of the insider. It has to do more with selling off Amazon and landing page creation. So if you're in that phase of your Amazon journey, that might be valuable to you. Okay, Andy, today we want to talk about one of the ways to find products, specifically products that for us have led to some of our products having over $100,000 in monthly sales using this method. And the first way is just looking at the frequently bought together section of Amazon detail pages. So walk me through for you personally, how do you utilize the frequently bought together section? And if you were um, a new seller, just looking for your very first product, how might you use this? And if you're an existing seller, um, it's a little bit different. So I think we'll dive into both. But walk me through what you look for in that frequently bought together section. Sure, absolutely. And and I think we've talked about this often that <clears throat> you really want to become an expert in the Amazon catalog. So that's actually, you know, when you're on Amazon yourself, you're purchasing products, you really want to become an expert on how Amazon is displaying various products to you and to their customers. And it's just like, you know, if you're in the jungle and, you know, you've never been in this jungle before, but you have to get to a destination, it's really hard. But if you have an expert with you who knows where to go left or where to go right, it makes all the difference in the world in finding that destination. Same thing when it comes to the Amazon catalog and finding potential products, you have to know where to go and how to navigate to find those million dollar products. And I'm thankful to say that as we've been doing this now for nine years, and I think Nate, we've gotten better year over year. Some of our top selling products that we sell right now are products that we found just by looking at the frequently bought together. So we're selling a product and then we also see the customer who buys our product has bought another product that we are then able to sell. So you really want to become an expert in understanding how Amazon is displaying those. And it's really gold that Amazon gives us when they show us exactly what the customers are searching for when they find our product, or if you don't have a product yet, when they find complementary products to products that you're potentially looking for. So when you're on the listing page, you want to scroll up 
you want to go down and you want to see, Amazon says it, frequently bought together. That's like a ding, ding, ding. Amazon is telling you like this product, if you sold it along with this product, it's going to be a really good match. You're going to really be able to build out your brand and your product line if you sell both of them together. So that's kind of the way that we found a number of products, not only just new products, but then additional products to our line. So as you're looking at that listing page, go down and then start following those rabbit trails. Because when you click on that product, then again, as you scroll up, you're gonna see again the same thing, frequently bought together. So that's just Amazon's own data that they're giving us, basically telling us like this is what customers want, right? Yeah, so if you're an insider and you've been following our $10 million challenge that we're doing this year, one of our goals was to launch a brand new product line that could get to a million dollars this year. Uh, we're still in the process of that here in, you know, um, heading into Q2. So, uh, it, you know, we'll see whether we hit that goal, but we're seeing some really good early results in the way that we found this initial product that is the first of many in this new product line was through the frequently bought together of one of our existing bestsellers. So people who are buying our, our existing product, we saw, um, it, it actually wasn't in, and to be clear here, this is something why you just have to, what you were saying, follow the rabbit trails and, and research, uh, Amazon more was that the frequently bought together for this product actually wasn't on our list, our main listing. And this is why you have to do some digging. So we didn't see this as soon as we probably would have, if it would have been on our, our actual detail page, it was when we started doing some more catalog research, I found some other products in a related niche. And I kept seeing that for those products, our main product was frequently bought together with those. Okay. So it's a little bit of a reverse engineer. Obviously you wouldn't find this unless you are spending that time in the catalog and you're seeing it. But at, once I saw on these other products, just by doing research, being in the catalog, trying to find stuff and in a closely related niche. So it made sense to stumble the way into it. And there was some related PAT ads, I think on, on listings that could have helped me get there too. Once I saw that our product was a frequently bought together with these other, um, with almost all the other products in this niche, uh, that's when the alarm bell went off. And I said, okay, this would be a good new line to add kind of a um, horizontal integration or like a, a product line integration into what we're existing selling. So if I was selling today and I was looking on Amazon, I was trying to find my first product and I was doing my research, the way I've done it is when I stumble upon a good niche using the methods that we talked about in last week's episode. So go back and listen to that if you haven't yet of you know identifying the pain points and identifying my hobbies. If I was looking at products there or if I was using a software like Helium 10 to do product research, or now Amazon has their new product opportunity explorer tool in Amazon. I, I do believe you need to be in the brand registry program for that to show up in your seller central under the growth tab. If you have that, that's actually um, getting better every week. They just had an update recently to that where they now are displaying uh, search volume year over year. So you can see the increase in search volume, uh, which is a very helpful trending um, analysis to look at when you're doing this research. You can use all these kind of tools to find products. So what I've done is when I'm doing my research, there's been times where I thought one product was good, but then I determined, man, this is just too competitive. But then I go to the frequently bought together and I, and I start kind of going through those rabbit trails that you were talking about, Andy. And from there, I've identified a good brand new niche that we've never sold in. So that's how I would just always check that. If you're doing your research, always go one layer deeper by looking at the frequently bought together. Uh, so that's one thing I would do. And then if I was selling an existing product line, I would be paying very close attention to what my customers were buying in addition to the main product to try to, to try to find the next product that's going to add to the line. And I'll give a couple quick practical or tactical tips to do on this that we've done. When you are launching that new product in, that's the frequently bought together. So now you have your main product and currently customers are buying this, essentially what's now a competitor, right? That is the frequently bought together. You're bringing in your new private label that you're hoping will replace this existing competitor in the frequently bought together. That, that's kind of the goal. So how can you do that? How can you help um, turn the existing frequently bought together of a competitor into your new um, complementary product? One way that we're doing that is we are having a coupon 
on the listing. That's simply a buy one product, um, or, or if you add both products to cart, you get a, a discount, right? Or buy one, get 10% off the next product, right? So people who do look at those coupon promotions are then seeing, hey, this is a related product. Uh, we start to display these related products in our images, in our videos, right? So you want to be cross-selling in your creatives that are on the listing, in your main images, in your video, in your A-plus content, showing customers, hey, if you're using this, we recommend this. Another way is when we're doing our insert cards for this main product, we would then try to start putting insert cards in with that main product saying, hey, have you checked out this other product that we have? Here's a 10% um, off discount code for it, right? Or um, go check out this listing. We'll give you something for it, right? So just start exposing your customers from your existing product that's already selling to this new one. And then um, one more way that we are trying to kind of boost these sales is by when we are, are running some external promotions, this is kind of getting off Amazon top talk now, but when we're sending emails out um, to our audience, we're, we're recommending both of these at the same time. When we are running some ads, we might actually have an option to um, click one link that adds both of these products to the cart, right? So you can actually create Amazon links where the link itself adds two ASINs to the cart, right? So just all these ways to try to um, get your potential customers to be thinking about not just the one product, but the cross sell product as well. This is going to get that kind of, um, launch effect, which leads us into our next topic, Andy, the honeymoon period. So we've been talking about this for years. Um, I, I believe there's an article, our producer, uh, Ab sent this to, to me last week, this article that was kind of like a, um, it wasn't leaked, but it was a little known talk that an Amazon algorithm person had, I believe back in 2018, where they basically kind of, Amazon's really tight fisted normally with their, how their algorithm works. Right. And it's pretty obvious to everybody that, that sales juice the algorithm, but he specifically talked about how when new products are, are, um, inter introduced to the market, Amazon looks at stuff over time periods. Right. And this is why we know that, um, a lot of these softwares, when they're talking about launching, they'll talk about kind of like the, the first 10 days or the first 21 days or the first 90 days, because there's these time periods that Amazon looks at the whole catalog and they divide the sales of each product divided by the number of selling days. So what that means is when you have a new product on Amazon in that honeymoon period, those, those early days of the launch there's less days that are getting divided into those sales, which means that you have this opportunity to boost your ranking a lot because you can be um, showing relevant to Amazon early. And to me, to me, I think they basically hinted out, they, they essentially have this relevancy score for every product where they want the customers um, to be exposed to relevant products. So this is why whenever you start seeing trends come up, like, I guess, I don't know if this is a trend or not, but when COVID hit, right? everything that was at the top of search was COVID related products because that was a trend that was super hot for a long time, essentially. Um, and so that's why all those products kind of instantly boosted the top because the search, even though traditionally they haven't sold the best, Amazon's algorithm has to know that this is what in the short term customers really want to see based on their search. So we have those honeymoon and we'll talk about three things that we try to do to, to juice that honeymoon. Um, and so what is the main thing that you, that, that you're looking for Andy, when, when we're launching a new product on Amazon and, and what lately have we been doing to juice that honeymoon period? Yep. So, um, just to go back a little bit, Amazon is really a technology company. So a lot of people, when they think of Amazon, they think it's like a Walmart, right? Or a target. That's not what they are at, at the foundation. They are a technology company. Everything is driven by algorithms. And so when you talk about the frequently bought together, Amazon is in the business of selling products because every product that sells, every product that a customer buys, they get a little chunk of that percent, right, of sale. So they want to sell a ton of products. So that's why they set the algorithm up so that when you're shopping and then you see something else that's very similar, they're hoping that you will click that, you know, add the cart button, not just for one product, for two products, because again, they're a technology company. And so when it comes to the honeymoon period, like you said, everything on Amazon is run by an algorithm. Their system is called the A9. And so they have this sophisticated uh, algorithm uh, shopping system that really tries to get people to buy as much consumer good, as many consumer goods as possible. 
Well, in order to do that, if a new product, right, is introduced to the catalog, if I created a listing right now, if Amazon did not favor that listing, it would be on page 100. So it's never going to be found in search. And so what, what we think that they have to do, and they want to be the everything store. So they want to have, right, millions of products. They want every product that's on the earth. Amazon wants that in their catalog. Well, if that product is going to get bought when it's initially listed, Amazon somehow has to favor it to show up for those keywords. And then it's going to basically test. And we don't know how long that period is. If it's two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, where they're going to be displaying, given special privilege, basically, to that listing to see if customers are really interested in purchasing it through those keywords. So you really, as a seller, you have to understand, you have to take that honeymoon period super serious because this is your opportunity. It's like when you step up to the plate and now you're ready to swing. This is when you are ready to hit the ball. You have to have everything in order, right? So we often say like, look, you got to have a great listing. You got to have great images right from the gate because as soon as you hit live on that listing, that's when Amazon is going to start with their algorithm by giving you favor and you're going to be a dis display to customers who might potentially buy your product. So there's three things here that we're going to go over. If you have a notepad out, get your pen and paper, write them down. Nate, what are those three things that we always do? Yeah, and an uh, interesting tip before I get into those A9, the reason they named it that was because algorithm has nine letters. So it's simply A9. So if you ever hear someone talking about the A10 update coming out, um, it doesn't even make sense because it's not a version number. It's simply uh, algorithm has nine letters, right? Jeff Bezos is definitely, um, him and his team are, are classic tech nerds and everything uh, that they name is definitely has a reason behind it, it seems like. All right, so if in 2022, when we are launching products on Amazon, we are trying to juice that honeymoon period by doing three main things right now every time we launch a product. So number one, we are looking to partner with influencers. And really, we're trying to get more and more aggressive with the level of quality of influencers that we're going after. So not just kind of the micro influencers at this point, but when we're really getting serious about a launch, we'll try to approach a little bit of a larger influencer that might even have um, hundreds of thousands of followers that we can really partner with in a sense where we're going to give them a lot of incentive to do this, to juice the algorithm by pushing a lot of traffic to Amazon on day one of the launch. Uh, number two, we are really starting to improve the production quality and level of our creatives when it comes to a new product. So in the past, when it came to a video that we had on Amazon or that we were going to use to market to our audience, we really were bootstrapping, which is good when you're first starting out, but we're realizing more and more that if you can just spend a little bit of extra time and the, the amount of effort really compounds, so it's just a little bit of extra effort can go, can potentially produce five times the amount of results. Uh, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a little bit of a higher level production video. And it might be using um, ourselves, it might be using those influencers or just people in our network or, or our audience. And when I say higher production, it still simply can be using uh, an iPhone, right? The latest iPhone out there, honestly, uh, has, has such great production quality value to it that you don't need to um, hire a studio to create a $20,000 shoot for you. You can still do this simply um, at home. It's just putting a little bit of time and effort it takes to plan um, a video. So I would, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to um, get a lot of our audience out there to pre-get our product, test it, send us in videos that they're doing. We're having someone on our team who's doing a little bit of planning of, uh, what what would be like a good scenario? Are they going to be out using this product? They're trying to make sure there's a live use case to this. They're answering some questions through this video. And we're putting that all together. We're creating a couple different versions and we're using that on Amazon and in Facebook ads. And then number three, we are sending out 20 to 50 plus of our units to people in our social networks that could be through YouTube, it could be through Facebook, it could be through Instagram or TikTok, direct messaging people or creating a post or a video telling people, hey, this is a product that we're going to be launching in a few weeks. 
reach out to us if you want to be an early tester of this. And to be clear, this is not for getting reviews on Amazon. This is for getting real feedback before you launch to make sure that the customers really are going to like this and that you've addressed any potential problems. And it's to get the social proof creatives of these people creating videos, creating posts on social networks and creating all these written messages and videos that you could take and then use either on Amazon or in your advertising. And those are three things that we're doing for every launch going forward. And we're seeing really good results right now. All right. Well, um, I think that's a, a really good look at real ways that we're looking for products and that we're launching products. Um, and I did want to give a shout out to uh, Gay Lisby and Colleen Zerbel, who are um, partners of the Amazon Seller Tribe. They co-lead that group, but they don't just lead the Amazon Seller Tribe, but they've helped 100 plus people currently become million dollar sellers. They sell themselves, right? And uh, Gary actually just posted yesterday a screenshot. They're too humble, I think, to to post it themselves. But they hit in March their their largest sales month outside of Q4 ever, right? So we all know that Q4 is obviously um, for most sellers kind of the best sales period. But when you get outside of Q4, it can really start to dry up sometimes and get a little discouraging until you get back towards the Q4 time frame. Sometimes you just kind of mutter through the rest of the year and, and just hope that you don't make too many mistakes. But Gay and Colleen really have their foot on the gas. They've hired some new people lately that I think are just really helping them to ramp things up. And so this screenshot shows in March that they hit $175,000 in sales. And it was actually a day or two early before the end of the month. Um, that's all arbitrage, essentially. Arbitrage and maybe some wholesale to it, but all arbitrage, right? So just the power of them. Not to mention that um, maybe you could speak to Andy. Obviously, they have a lot going on beyond, beyond just like their day to day. So just what that means kind of seeing them do this. Yeah, this really is what the tribe's all about. Uh, the, the goal of the tribe is creating the most seven figure sellers in the Amazon seller space. And our awesome leaders, Gay and Gary, they do it themselves. So Gay and Colleen, they actually both take care of elderly parents. So, you know, if, if you're a little older and you know, uh, and you take care of a parent, you know, all of the energy and time that's required in that. And at the same time, they're running an amazing business out of their garage that sold $175,000 in the month of March. Again, it's a testament to the grit and the genius of them, but also a testament to the power of what we're talking about here of the Amazon sales channel and how the opportunity is ripe for picking for anyone that wants to build a side hustle or a full-time hustle. These are women who just started selling on Amazon about five years ago. They had careers in education. Uh, unfortunately, they both went through some difficult situations family-wise. They came together. Nate, I don't know if we talk about this, but they started with zero. They didn't have any money when they started. They quickly scaled up. They paid off their house that they were in. Now they live in a beautiful home. They run it out of their garage. And again, what an amazing story to be able to sell $175,000 a month because of the power of the Amazon FBA program, Fulfillment by Amazon, where you can scale up in massive ways. Yeah, to be honest, everybody's situation is different. But if there's any, you know, uh, people who had the opportunity to make excuses, it was them. Uh, but if you know them, they are definitely not ladies that make excuses. So there probably was no chance of that happening. Uh, they just got it done. So very inspiring to see them do that. Definitely um, am encouraged week over week of the stories that come out. And that's why we try to share these on the podcast, because even if it's not the same selling model uh, that you are using, or if someone has a different situation or live in a different place of the world than you do, uh, I think hearing other people's success on the Amazon platform or e in e-commerce or entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is inspiring at any level for anybody who truly uh, is just someone who uh, loves to see the game get played by different people and, and loves to see other people find success. And, and listen, I mean, just think about it. If, if they were to have purchased a Subway franchise, the average Subway franchise make our gross revenues about $500,000 a year. Well, they, they almost, you know, in one month, they're almost halfway there to what a Subway franchise would do. They're running out of the garage. That's crazy.
Yeah, the, um, we talked about it, I think, last week, but uh, I think this is why Gay was just featured in that Business Insider story because, number one, their story really is inspiring and cool, so it's, it's kind of maybe outside the typical realm of, of what you're seeing, but still just shows you the potential is out there uh, to do this from home uh, on the internet, right? It's it's just what is available right now still, and a lot of people doubt kind of the future. There is a little you know, cynical about the opportunities that are out there when it comes to selling on Amazon. Uh, we still see new people come through the tribe selling for less than a year, hitting the million dollar sales mark. So uh, it's definitely still potential for anybody to get in and to scale up. And we we started our journey with arbitrage with you know various different selling models before we really hit on building our brand and what we're doing today. So the journey is is interesting to see at all levels. All right. Well, I want to I want to end with this, Andy. This is uh, really um, uh, we've been talking about AMZ Pro every week. So, uh, you know, what, what's cool about it is there's basically a new story every week to talk about because there's so much that comes out of AMZ Pro. This one's actually kind of extra cool because the dollar amount is not as high as some of the other dollar amounts we've talked about. But it was money that we personally almost lost. And so I'm really glad that we recovered it. So we have a second Amazon account outside of the main, um, actually, we have several Amazon accounts. There's a second brand that we just started not that long ago, um, maybe two years ago. And due to our main brand just really taking off and, and having the bulk of our success, we had started this other brand that had potential, but we just didn't have the time and energy to devote to it. So we kind of wound it down last year, right? We It was still selling, it was profitable, but it wasn't worth the attention that was due in order to scale it up. And maybe in the future, we'll kind of come back to it. But we had sold a decent amount over the past uh, year and a half or so, and we kind of had just left it and, and not done a whole lot with it. And because we had scaled it down and, and basically deactivated it in a sense a couple of months ago, I had just forgotten about it and it was not top of mind. Well, we recently got it set up with AMZ Pro. I think it was at one point and we stopped when we were wind, winding it down. It just wasn't worth the time. Well, we just connected it again. And just this past week, the team at AMZ Pro recovered over $500 that was sitting in that account um, that we would have lost if we would have just forgot about it. So that's what I, you know, th th there's money that's just laying around thousands, tens of thousands of dollars laying in accounts of people listening to this. I, kn I know it's true. I know people listening are probably like, ah, I don't have that much money. I guarantee there's somebody who listens to this who has more money owed to them than they realize, and they're just going to lose it because after 18 months, it's gone forever for most uh, lost, damaged, destroyed. And for FBA shipments, you actually only have uh, between 60 days and then um, the nine month mark. You kind of have this like weird period where Amazon makes you wait for a while before you can first try to get your discrepancies adjusted. And then they only give you a shorter time frame before they say it's gone forever. And you, you, you know, sorry, you're outside of the time period. Um, same thing for negative seller feedback. You only have 90 days to get that negative seller feedback. And if you're not on top of it, it gets permanently etched into your account under that one, two or three uh, star feedback, not reviews. We're talking about feedback here and you can't get it back. Uh, that's why AMZ Pro, it's so cool to get the money back, $500 back from the secondary account that we aren't even selling on anymore. So it's just like going to be 500 bucks that hits back on that account um, that, that we would have lost uh, and the negative feedback we're getting that removed usually the same day it appears, if not like within 48 hours, uh, definitely not letting it get to that 90 day mark. So if you haven't yet, check out amzprofessional.com uh, or go to amazingfreedom.com and go to the AMZ professional part of the service. Obviously, we are a little biased on it, but we see re the results every week. So I think it speaks for itself, the results. And check it out. Um, you can you can try it for a month, a couple months and see for yourself as well. You no, know, I was thinking Amazon Pro, it's kind of like uh, when Will Smith went up and slapped Chris Rock. <laughs> Amazon Pro is like going up to Amazon, slapping them, saying, give me my money back. <laughs> Either that or going to sellers and saying something like you only have or no, here, here's what it is. It's AMZ Pro slapping sellers saying, don't pay 25% to a service that's ripping you off when you oh, can use AMZ sure. Pro, right? So uh -huh. it's it's slapping the 25% fee out of uh, people's mind. If you're paying 25% to a service to get you your own money back, uh, make sure you fix that. That's probably not the best move going forward. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, 
Uh, thank you so much, Andy, uh, for the insights on uh, real ways we find products and that we launch those products. Hope that was valuable. Go to amazingfreedom.com and become an insider if you want to catch the third edition of our Insider Magazine or if you want to get our weekly newsletter where we're giving insights in our $10 million challenge and all things that we're doing in our brand. Appreciate you guys. Catch you next week on the next episode of the Amazing Freedom Podcast.